So, they're all the configuration commands that we need to do. Really, all we need to do was these two. Tell git our name and tell git our email address. But these colorful ones make things a bit easier. Now, on Linux, what git config actually does is create a file in your home directory called dot .git, .git config. So we can have a look in here. Cat dot. Actually, I'll do this the easy way. I'm aware that not everyone who watches this video is going to be really comfortable in Linux, so I'll make things as easy as I can. Git gedit dot git config. And I'll move this into a place where you can see it. And there you go. This is what git config has just added to this file. It's put in our username and email address, and it's put in all these color values. So if we wanted to and we knew how this, this file had to look, we could just edit the file ourselves. Um, but why do it when git config can do it for us? So let's just quit that. So now git knows about us, and we can start using it. Um, depending on the version of git that you run, if you forget to tell git your name and email address, it won't let you commit anything until you do. Um, I think the version I have installed doesn't do that, but in the later versions it does. So, let's create a folder for our, that's going to contain our project. So we'll just make a make a directory project, some project, and we'll change into that directory. Now, how do we get a repository set up? Now, on subversion, and this is the main reason people who are just working on code for themselves don't use version control, is it's too hard to set up a server and make it work. In Git, remember that we don't need a specialized server because every copy is a full version of the repository. So all we have to do really to set this up is type git init. And look at that. Initialized an empty git repository in slash home Michael some project. Hooray, we've got a git repo and that's all we needed to do. So with that we can type git status Git status, you're going to use a lot. It tells you the current state of your working version of the repository. So we're on branch master. This is, an, uh, this is our initial commit, and there's nothing to commit because there's no files. We haven't created any files yet. So let's create one. G edit readme.txt. Oh, I don't know why that's going straight back up there. So, all right. Hello, world and we can that's all we're going to put in here for this version so we're going to save that and quit now if we type git status again this is this color coming in so we've got some red text here now what this is saying is that these are untracked files readme.txt git seen that we've got a file called readme.txt but we haven't told git to track that file so how do we do that well we type git add readme.txt and that's it now if we type git status I'm just going to clear the screen if we type git status now look at that in on branch master initial commit changes to be committed new file readme.txt that's good that means when we commit our changes this file is going to become part of the repository so how do we commit our changes git commit and now we're popped into a text editor. Um, we're popped into the text editor Vim because that's what I have my environment set up to do. Um, of course, if you're on Linux, you're, uh, sorry, if you're on Windows, you're probably not going to use Vim. You're going to use something else. But bear with me as I use Vim for this video. So, initial commit. We have a README file. WQ. So save and quit. Now, Git's given us some information here. Create an initial commit with this crazy code here. Initial commit, we have a readme file. So that was the log file that I, that was what I put into the log. And it's told us that one file changed, oh, cha told us that one file changed and there was one insertion. So one line got inserted. And we've created this file readme.txt. Now, what on earth does this line mean? Well, if we come back over to here, In Git, actually, let's not let's contrast a bit for now. Let's not look at Git just yet. In subversion,
each version of the repository is represented as a number. So. And this number starts at 1. And it just increments. Every time we do a commit, the repository number gets incremented. So that's how subversion works. CVS works in a similar way except each file gets its own version number. So uh, if we did the equivalent thing in CVS, we'd have 1.1 and then it'll be 1.2, 1.3, as the file gets changed. So subversion works on the repository. CVS works on the file. So what does git do? Well, git works on the commit. So I can write. I promise you I can write normally. So each commit gets a number, but it's not a simple number that gets incremented from 1 and plus plus. So in git, each commit is stored as a SHA-1 hash, hash. So that's why this was such a crazy... Uh, where's my mouse? So that's why this was such a crazy number. Um, because it's a SHA-1 hash. If we type git log, which we'll talk about in just a sec. Huh? Ah, here we go. So this is the full commit number of our first commit. All of that. It's a SHA-1 hash of the entire repository at that point. This is really, imp this is kind of a good idea. The reason we do a SHA-1 hash is we can guarantee the content of the repository. I've spelled that wrong. And this is really important. Git promises that what we put into the repository is what we get out. Okay, we promise that what we put into the repository is what we get out. Now, this is really important. In subversion, you can do an SVN dump, edit the text file that it creates, and then put it back into the repository. You can change the content of the repository, and subversion will never know. In Git, that's impossible, because if you change a commit object or a file object, then the hash will change, and Git will be able to tell you that something bad has happened. So this is this this is not a so much a security thing as it is a data integrity thing. Git promise you promises you that what we put into the repository is what we get out again. It makes the commit numbers look a bit messy, but it's a good trade off I think. The could the cool thing about this is for most of the time, if we want to talk about a specific commit, we can just talk about the first eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can just look at the first eight characters here. We don't have to deal with this whole string.